Hey guys, I'm on the water with Scott here from the Bass Tank, and one of the questions I get a lot is, what are my settings? You know, I post a picture on Instagram or Facebook, and hey, what are your settings? What are you doing different? What's about this special transducer you have? It's nothing special. All of these came out of the same boxes that you guys get from Garmin too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the settings that I have, you know, the combos that I create, the settings, we're gonna start at the console, and then we're gonna move to the front, you know, go through live scope and all that stuff. All right, so this is my console, okay? You gotta remember this. This is my personal preference. This is what I want. Scott runs a different setup, I'm sure, and you may want a different setup. That's the cool thing about these units is you can set up however you want. First of all, I'm gonna let him push buttons while I talk. He's probably gonna talk some, just to make it a little quicker. This is my running setup, running down the lake, okay? I don't, this is all I need to see is mapping, 2D, and a big wide view of mapping, all right? Scott, take away this sidebar, because I don't want that. All right. Okay, this is why. Time, depth, I pretty much have all of this information here. So let's make my unit from a 10 inch back to a 12. So we're gonna go here into menu, uh, configure combo. We're going to edit overlays, and we're just gonna hide the overlay numbers. Then we're gonna hit the back, and then they're gone. Okay, I want my map bigger than my bigger because I don't need a lot of two that, that's exactly right so what we're gonna do is come in here to menu we're gonna configure combination we're gonna edit the layout make sure we're here there edit combo edit combination there we go slide that baby over I like it thin because most of the 2d that I'm looking at is just running down the lake yep so that gives me the full map right there one thing of note, make sure you hit the done button because yep. I've we've, we've had that where you don't and you make changes you didn't mean to. Okay, let's look at the settings in the GTA. All right, so we're going to hit menu again and it's giving me the option, you know, the fishing chart menu, traditional sonar, or the combinations, the overall. So we're going to go into traditional sonar. These are all the settings in here that we can change. Okay. I, everything looks about right i don't see anything other than gain you know i mess with gain some right and, and that's lake per lake yeah. you know uh so yeah but uh, 2d is something that i mean you can pretty much live with the factory default yep okay uh mapping let's um i'm a north up guy okay are you what are you i'm doing? not i'm a course up guy i'm north up and i'm old school i gotta see i just that's just the way i started fishing that's what i want and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here to, to fishing chart. We're gonna go into chart setup. Map orientation is head up. And you wanted that north up. North up, it puts me in the center. It makes my map always stay the same and my, my boat is actually moving like I'm above it. Absolutely. One thing that uh, we're going to do is vessel or orientation. Um, if you want it to be oriented versus heading versus auto course over ground, you know, I run it heading because now even with the north up you at least know where your boat is going yep. in in relation uh in relative to the the north uh orientation this is another one that i see a lot that guys don't realize like hey my mapping doesn't have the detail i was expecting come in here and change this detail to most now that's going to slow it down loading just a little bit because it's got to put a lot more contours but that's where you're going to get your maximum contours um out of out of your mapping okay um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Back. So I want to zoom in to see. Yep, I'm missing a heading line. Yes, sir. That's so, one of the, the, it's all that you put it in, and then I'll talk about it. So again, we're back into the fishing chart menu. Um, we want to go into layers, and this is under my vessel. Think about it. This is, this is what I'm, I'm doing. The heading line display is off, obviously. And then distance five miles okay this is my running unit so this is when i'm running down the lake and i know at the end of my uh now i'm going to stop you for a second you said five miles it only goes out to a mile so no it, no. Goes, it goes it goes to uh distance feet you can change it i thought you could change it to miles you can oh yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah put in because you want it going forever, right? You're wanting it going off the page. No, I want five miles, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Okay. 
That would be a good one to talk about yeah. here. Because a lot of the times I end up fishing around takeoff and I know that if I shut down here and that heading line is within return, yeah. I know that I'm five minutes or less on getting back. That's why I want five. That's why I always like five miles. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But, and I use this heading line a lot to be able to line up with brush piles, yeah. you know, stuff like that. If you guys aren't using the heading line and actually if you zoom back out, it's not only five miles, it's one, two, it's segmented by miles. Absolutely. So I can, you know, if I need one, two, or three. But if you're not using the heading line and pulling up and fishing brush piles and stuff like that, then I don't know why you have this stuff and not using it. And one thing of note is we talked about the, the calibration of our, of our pucks. We know that one's not calibrated yet. So it's showing we're looking at a distance that we're not. We're actually looking this way. And so if we took off down the lake, this would keep that, that weird orientation. So that's gonna change when we get that calibrated. What he's saying is if you're running down the lake and, you're, and your heading is over here and you're moving this way, you need to recalibrate your unit, your heading sensor there. This pretty much sets it up. I'm kind of back in the same way. I don't need a lot of this, you know, maybe two or three inches. So you can move that over. And while you're, there you go, that easy. While you're in there, you can change uh, the to amber. Okay. Or is it copper? So right now we're, um... I use amber and copper color scheme. Oh, so I'm, I'm sitting there looking at it. <laughs> Um, and so you said you want this set to amber? Yep, that's my favorite one. Okay. That's what I use most of the time. And notice how it just changes your side. So you'll have to go in there and do that on the clear that, view as That's well. exactly correct. So, Because some guys believe and use one color for clear view and one, one color for side view because they believe it shows, you know, and it may. I'm not, and, and, and I'm actually one of those guys, I actually prefer, and it depends on what I'm looking for. You yeah. know, if I, and I'm not telling you anything here, but if I'm on a, a lake with a hard bottom, I want a different color or I'm looking for grass. Yeah. My eyes see those returns differently um, on, you know, different colors. My favorite for down is actually black emerald, believe it or not. Yeah. Especially when you get those high skies days, it just, it's not overwhelming but there's good contrast with it. Um, but amber and copper, probably my two favorite that I bounce between, um, except for specific applications. Right, let's go through some of the settings on okay. side view. First thing I see that I don't like is I usually run a 75 manual. Oh, you're on your range, I'm sorry, I apologize. I had to understand no, what you're saying. You're good. Yep, somewhere, that's fine. Do you run your zoom so you can? I don't. Okay. I don't run a zoom. All right. Um, obviously, somewhere in. So we come in here to set up. Do you, do you like your depth line on there? I'll show you guys what that is. It's just going to give you your, what your depth is, and it shouldn't match this, you know. Right. But whether you want that or not, I, I I'd, leave it off. Okay. I want the most. I mean, the most screen that I can. Get. Abs absolutely. Do you like your scroll speed just to be default, or do you go up down? I go up. But let's talk about that. What okay. is what? What would you do? So, for me, if I'm just out graphing a big, big ledge or something like that, um, you know, or I'm ranging way out there, you know, I run mine at 75 feet. That seems like a really good, good spot. Um, I'm going to if I'm looking for detail, I actually slow it down. But if I'm just going through looking for a school of bait or something like that, I'm going to run a little bit faster to keep up with the boat. I try to match the boat speed, um, you know, that I'm, that I'm going, this I is, have, a, I have a heavy foot, so I normally run seven. Absolutely. So if that's the case and I'm going to run this up seven to keep it up. So I'm just trying to match it. And that, this is a setting that I personally change a lot right. when I'm out hunting around. Um, again, we're talking about some really personal preferences here. Um, we can make an argument one way or the other for each one for sure. But if you've got a heavy foot, by all means, let's, let's run that up. Right. Um, and so then we need to talk about some overlay data here make sure because one thing of note is this data right here is for the clear view we can duplicate this data here as well and so this combo we can maybe get you're talking about wanting your entire screen well you may have that data over here on this other unit right. so we want this completely to be clean we don't even care about depth 
because you know what your depth is just from your sonar, right. you know. Um, but is that how you want it? Yeah. Because this is yours. Yeah, we'll leave it that way. That's okay. okay. Let's talk about what everybody wants to know about. The question I get a lot is what settings, really the only two settings that I mess with is gain okay. and contrast. Okay. Is that's the two most popular, right? That's, uh, that's really what changes your picture. Absolutely. So right now we're just at a default and we can run this up. Obviously the contrast, it's gonna make those things, you know, pop. It almost washes everything out right here yeah. and but it brightens things up here. So this is another one that I do play with quite a bit as well. You know, I like a mid 60s to 70 as, as a good starting point. Yeah. Um, now I will tell you this, if I change color palettes, this contrast has to change. Right. Um, there's times I actually write, uh, run an inverse grayscale. Yeah. And this cannot be at this setting. You know, I have to play with that. One of the things that I think a lot of people want is they want that number, 65 or 70. That's exactly right. And that's there's just not a case because you know, one lake might be mud, one lake might be rock. I mean, it's just different. This is something that you have to change. And a good way, if, you, if you're not out there all the time, is always just run it up real hot and then start backing it down to, to kind of where I still got some hot to show, you know, the hard objects. Yep. But it's not so faint that I can't see everything. You and, know? and a rule that I, I'll, I'll tell you a rule that I go by, and you tell me if you agree with this, is just like you said, I run this up. And then I start running it down until I can make out a shadow. Mm -hmm. And so that object, that brush pile or that rock creates a shadow. As long as I can still make out that shadow, I know I'm in that sweet spot of I'm not too hot because what'll happen right here, this would wash out a shadow. Right. Well, if I get it too low, I'll never even have the return. So I get it where I say, okay, there's a shadow there. I'm in that sweet spot for this water column. So, right. and I default, you know, I, I start at 65 and I, that's kind of where I go from there. And don't you agree that pretty much clear view contrast the settings matches yes i mean you got to play with it to get what you want on the lake that I, you're on yeah i found they're they're typically within about five percent of each other yeah. you know and a lot of times i just set on the same and and that's that's pretty pretty good you know there's a very few times you know when you're in those deeper lakes when i'm really fishing offshore mm -hmm. and it, when i say deeper i'm talking i'm in 30 plus foot range that's when i really got to get in here and tweak but those are some really you know um my new uh, scenarios for sure. So I, I will I will say one thing, and then we can move forward. And this is frequency right okay. here. I missed I missed one of the biggest things. Yeah. So frequency right here, we're in the 1,070 kilohertz. That that is a megahertz range. Um, so sometimes you may not want to run that 1,000 kilohertz. You may want to drop down to this, and you say, okay. Why, why am I going to drop down to that? So, so why do you, do you change this? Is this a setting you change or? I do change it. Okay. Off and on. What, where do you change it? Um, just based on really the speed. Yep. That I'm looking at things. Okay. So something of note, and this is something I've, I've, I've put some videos out on talking about sonar and what sonar frequency is. The lower frequency is going to have better penetration as far as deeper water goes. So when you do get out there in that 30 plus range, sometimes you need to lower this frequency because if you've ever seen running this and you start getting dark mm -hmm. it's because we're not getting the same penetration yeah. um, and I, I equate it to pulling up to a vehicle at a stoplight and you can hear that bass bumping mm -hmm. inside the vehicle you can hear the words and that's that high frequency that definition the words the definition yeah. outside we can hear the bass we can't hear the words well that's that low frequency and so that's where we're getting that penetration bass is a low slow frequency it carries so that's why I may run this at a lower level. That's just something that I've done in testing and, and you know, just understanding frequency with my background. That's how I, I do it. But you're exactly right. When your your speed is a big factor in this as well. And depth. I mean, depth plays, but how often does this guy get in 30 foot of water? That's that's exactly right. I'm talking to, to yeah, to, yeah, if you're not turning mud, you're not happy. So one of the things I don't like is on the mapping. I want yep. that pretty reds and blues right. and stuff like that. And what that does is it makes it quicker for Ab me to absolutely process so what you're talking about there is you're talking about depth shading is and this is very configurable so what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll go to our fishing chart menu and then there's several different ways to get here but we'll go through layers we'll go to water and then you see our depth shading is turned off here so what we'll do is turn it on and then we get this little arrow we're going to turn go ahead and turn shallow shading off you can cycle fishing contours i can't imagine why you would want that 
You can even overlay relief shading on this as well. This particular lake is not gonna have relief shading, just a little, little lake we do some testing on. But our depth shading, you get your pretty reds. Select this arrow, and then you can come configure these. Something of note is you don't have to go in five foot increments. You could do a zero to five, you could do a five to six, and then a six to 15. These are settings that I would use on 10 killer. Yeah. At a 30. On Okeechobee, I'm gonna do zero to one, two to three, you it, know, four to five. Exactly. It just allows me to process the depth faster. If I'm catching them, or if I'm, you know, if I'm catching them five foot or less, all I gotta do is look for red. Yep. You That's, know, if I'm catching them 20 or 17, whatever, 15 to 20, all I gotta do is look for the green. Well, and, and one thing of that note is even doing that, you could, even turn a specific range off yep. and then you've got this white that is in between two colors that really sticks itself out as well um, so depth shading is phenomenal you know using the active captain app as well which is a whole separate uh, video it's in yeah. itself but you can do that in the room and uh, you know then say hey these are my settings and and add them to your unit so that's depth shading real quick but huge tool for sure right. So I know there's a lot of questions out there and hopefully we answered two or three of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. there, there's still a lot of questions. I know you guys have that. So hopefully you learned something and we appreciate you riding along.